I'm Carol Brewer, curator of Blue Moon Gallery, and with me today are co-founders of watercolor artists of the Sacramento Horizon, WASH, Jan Miskelin and Nancy Haley. So, tell us a little bit about the background of WASH. Well, in 1978, uh, as a watercolor instructor, uh, I met Nancy Haley. She was a member of my class. And uh, the two of us had a conversation about watercolor and our place in the art world. We've always uh, heard that watercolor was the stepchild of the oil painters, which we didn't really appreciate. And uh, Nancy and I talked, and um, particularly Nancy's idea of let's get a group together and uh, have, have an organization of watercolorists, or at least water-based media, in the Sacramento area, and even perhaps beyond. And since I was teaching and had a class of 25 people, <laughs> I uh, had a group, a very active and enthusiastic group, and we presented the idea to them. They were willing to go with it, and uh, I collected $10 from each one of them, which gave us $250, and uh, WASH was on its way. However, we had to organize uh, legally, and so we did meet. Uh, we created a constitution and uh, wrote our goals and mainly one of our goals was to get our work out into the community and share with the community our enthusiasm and our love of the medium. And, and how did you come up with the name WASH? Uh, we really talked a lot about what we were going to call ourselves. Uh, we wanted to be known as watercolor artists. We were from Sacramento. Uh, was didn't quite fit the bill, but uh, <laughs> wash was a watercolor technique, and we liked wash. We wanted to be known as wash. However, we did have to put a name to each one of those letters. So uh, my mother was very instrumental in coming up with the H. She was also a school teacher, and uh, said to us. If you are going to reach out beyond, let's just say, the confines of Sacramento or, or even the county, uh, why don't you use Horizons? And we felt that that fit the bill. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, what was it like when you first started the group? Nancy, Jan? Well, I would see a, a group of artists, or some were more advanced than others, that's true. But generally, there was a great feeling of camaraderie, enthusiasm, anxious pe people anxious to learn more about their using the media and, uh, and enjoying it at the same time. And what year did that begin, to WASH begin? WASH began in 1978. So it has been and going for 30 30 years. 35, 30, 35 years. 35 plus. Yes, yes. Corrected. Well, the uh, danger of most organizations, and it's and no one person can bear, you know, the blame for that, but uh, in order to keep it going, you have to uh, kind of look for and find, harvest new people that bring enthusiasm with them into the group and accept the idea that they're going to carry on in our tradition and uh, even bring in their own ideas and improvement. Wonderful. One thing that, we, that I'd like to interject here is the fact that in order to get new people in, we asked them if they were producing artists. We really were not interested in those who would just come along for the ride and we found a gold mine in Sacramento. No, well, we were surrounded. We had people coming all the way from uh, uh, Davis and Vacaville, um, uh, the Motherlode, Northern Motherlode, Nevada City Grass Valley, also down 
into Jackson and that area. People were driving really hour and sometimes an hour and a half to get to our meetings. They were dedicated people. <coughs> they really wanted it to go. Yeah. And this was held at the Sacramento Fine Arts Center. No, it was not. not the Sacramento first. Fine Arts Center was not in, had not uh, become as such. Oh, and, okay. Uh, no, we were meeting in uh, a, um, a senior residence that was not too far from where I lived. It was very convenient. That's where I was teaching. Oh, okay. And therefore, we held our meetings there. We had night meetings and held our meetings there for a number of years until the, um, I would say, late 80s. We were there almost 10 years My within goodness. this other area before the Fine Arts Center started. And you decided to move over? Well, Marge Long was a, uh, she was one of the founders of Fine Arts Center. Now, she was also a member of WASH, oh. and she was our president at the time when she found the space. Uh, the La Sierra High School had gone out of business, and uh, she came to the meeting one day and said, I found a spot. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so glad you brought that up. Um, so, why have you stayed committed and, and active? Because there's always new people to meet and new art uh, on display, uh, new activities uh, that the group is involved in, and the commitment of uh, being with old friends, good friends, over the years, taking an interest in their art that they're producing and they with my art. So there's a, a good you know, give and take there. Oh, okay. I'm very proud to say, too, yes. that we've always looked to the youth and that uh, every year since we were founded, we have given a uh, scholarship to high school seniors. I didn't we know. have collected money and at our meetings we have uh, a raffle and that money goes toward, at the end of the year, uh, to, to three deserving high schools. Wow for the artists to promote their, edu their further education in art. Mm -hmm. So we really are doing uh, something to promote the youth, and that's very important. And how do you decide which, which uh, student receives this? How, how do they qualify? Well, we have a show. <laughs> we have a, a show of all of the work, and that is picked by a judge of what that judge would pick as the top work, oh, okay. for the top three. Oh, that is really interesting that you've gone beyond just being a group. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, yeah. And you've given back to your community. That's a beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, what are the benefits of being a WASH member? Yes. Oh, the opportunity to uh, improve your own art, mm -hmm. learn from our meetings where we have demonstrators come in, other professional artists that are willing to demonstrate uh, techniques used. Uh, so, and then giving the opportunity to uh, people to uh, hang their work out in the community. We've hung our works in uh, banks, uh, commercial buildings, uh, schools, libraries, <laughs> almost any place, <laughs> and uh, hospitals. So we've, we've really promoted our art that way, and that gives uh, any member coming in an opportunity to see uh, where their work too might hang. Don't forget our first bus trip. Do you remember where we went? <laughs> our first, first bus trip. San Francisco, the King Tut oh. exhibit at the De Young. So we've had bus trips also. We've That's gone right. various places. Yeah. Uh, we've gotten a group, you know, of our members and hired a bus and away we go. <laughs> Wonderful. That must be so much fun. Oh my goodness. And um, this is, you two have been friends for a long time. Yes. Oh. And I was yeah. thinking how beautiful it is. We are sisters. We are sisters under the skin. Yeah, you can tell. But uh, we've traveled together. Yes. We've gone to uh, various locations and uh, worked together in Mexico, we've been to the Southwest, we have gone to uh, 
various locations mm -hmm. and to paint. And uh, you might mention Mendocino. Tell yes, us about well, that. <laughs> uh, a few years back, Jan invited me to join her in renting a beautiful home over in Mendocino that has an incomparable view out its back windows or terrace. Uh, we're looking the coastline and all the way up to the lighthouse. And from there you can walk all around uh, close, to, close enough to the beaches to paint them. Uh, you know, uh, the scenery is just fabulous. Up there. We are plein air artists. Well, I yes. was going to say, <laughs> this is something you really have in common. Mm -hmm. And yes. not all watercolors are plein air. Yeah. We're hikers. You love being outside in yeah. the elements experiencing in that moment mm -hmm. what you were seeing, what you were painting. Uh, I, I can think of a couple instances where uh, one time I was painting we, well, with Jan and the class, uh, our group, uh, on the beach and the uh, fog began rolling in toward <laughs> the, the late afternoon <laughs> and it was making my paint or making my uh, board that I paint on uh, getting damp, you know, considerably wet. So I thought, well, it's time to pack up and go back to the house that we were renting. And back there, as the paint dried, it left the most exquisite droplets all over my painting. And it just was a natural artistic effect. I had no idea that it would happen that way, but it was interesting that it would turn you know, into um, something wonderful and not, something not destroy exciting. work. Something yeah, <laughs> exciting. Wrong to write. And then I have another <laughs> instance where I, and I shouldn't maybe tell this, but uh, I saw this great view that I wanted to paint, and it was uh, at uh, Salmon Creek. And uh, the, the sand dunes there came right down, you know, toward the beach, toward the water, seagulls flying overhead. And I told Jan, I said, I've got, this is a great view, I've got to paint it, I've got to paint it. Well, when I got close to the fence, the sign said, um, do not proceed further. <laughs> this was a um, private property, a, a wire fence, yeah. And I thought, mm, I've just got to paint that, I just want to paint it so badly. So I, um, I snuck out between the wires. <laughs> sat on the beach and I told Jan, I said, I'll be with you, I'll be with you, give me about 20 minutes to paint this or get, get a start anyway. So I did, I painted as fast as I could, which was good because I like to paint quickly and simply as I can. And I got the view that I wanted uh, after I'd gotten through the barbed wire and I kept looking her over my shoulder. Nobody was watching me. That was good. And so I climbed out and uh, had a wonderful painting. Oh, good. I'm glad you <laughs> took a risk. And we all are risk takers. I, got, I had go a, out. a buyer. That when I showed that painting, I had a buyer uh, uh, who was an, uh, a doctor in town on a convention from Stockton. And he liked the view. He said, I know that. I know that area so well, and uh, I'm in a, a serious profession where I need calm. I'm going to hang it in my office. <laughs> oh my goodness, see? I didn't tell him how I did it though. Yeah, but look what you did for him. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, that's a, that's a good story. I, um, I guess I want to end this with what are your hopes and dreams for the future of WASH? To keep going forever. We hope. You know, when we started, mm -hmm. I was surprised that we would continue on 20 years, but we're into our 36th and, mm -hmm. or 37th, however it is, and um, it is a legacy to leave, hopefully to continue on. I could see that. Mm -hmm. I could see that happening very easily. Um, I visited the Sacramento Fine Arts Center last week, and during a meeting, uh, wash was happening and they had a speaker and there was a lot of activity, a lot of energy. It felt brighter. I don't know what it is about watercolors, but it's very loose. <laughs> As the, the uh, demonstrator said, water 
yeah. is an important word in color, uh -huh. that you let it flow. And then it was just a wonderful experience, and there were a lot of members there. So I, I was very impressed, and of course I love you, Jan, and love you too, Nancy, and I mm -hmm. really appreciate you taking time out of your life to do this interview. A pleasure. It is so important to get your voice. Thank you. Your story. A pleasure. Thank you.